Welcome back, my horror peeps. You know what? Let's take these off. I'm getting some glare. It is Doogie, and I am back in my horror den. And you know what? Just in time for some great new movie reviews for you. And I told you, you know, don't hold me accountable for when I do watch Ghostbusters Afterlife and decide to review it on the show because I said I was going to do it and I'm going to do it right now. But before I get into it, let me just say right now, go to the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment, tell me anything about horror because horror is where it's at and nope, it's coming out pretty good. Or er, pretty good. It's ruined the whole damn thing. It's coming out soon. And it looks good. So I can't wait for that. And also the new movie Prey. The brand new Predator movie coming out soon on Hulu. That is going to be crazy. Now, on to the reviews. Now before I go into the review, I know I keep saying that. But I have a rating system. M is for murder, and that's a movie you don't ever want to watch again. MD, murder, death, is all right. It's, it's decent. MDK, give me some more because I want to watch it again because it was that damn good. <laughs> With that being said, let me get right into Ghostbusters Afterlife. And, of course, that came out in 2021, it stars Paul Rudd, McKenna Grace, Finn Wolfhand, Carrie Coon, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, and Bill Murray, Bokeem Woodbine, J.K. Simmons, and even a cameo by Sigourney Weaver. Uh, directed by Jason Reitman, which is the son of Ivan Reitman, who directed you know, Ghostbusters 1 and 2. And this serves as a direct sequel to Ghostbusters 2. And pretty much... Um, the story is Egon gets killed by a ghost. Because, you know, Harold Ramis, you know, he, uh, you know, he passed away. Um, and leaves his farm in the middle of a Oklahoma, not desert, but farm, to a family. So they go out there and and all these supernatural things start happening around the town. And who are you going to call? Well, there's no Ghostbusters. Not anymore. But uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife has a lot of throwbacks to Ghostbusters. Not, not much of Ghostbusters 2, but a lot from Ghostbusters 1. Like, there's like little mini Safe Left Marshmallow Men. You know, um, pretty much this is the return of Gozer. He's trying to take over the world again like she tried in Ghostbusters 1. So, um, of course, um, there's lots of ghosts, lots of trapping, lots of crossing the streams, and, you know, of course, there is the, uh, the iconic move at the end of the movie where, you know, the old guys come back and save the day, you know, um, and, of course... It's left open for another one. And their Ghostbusters Day was a couple days ago. And they just said that Ghostbusters, a sequel to Ghostbusters Afterlife, was totally greenlit. So they're working on that. They're working on an animated movie and an animated TV series. So there's a whole bunch of Ghostbusting going to be happening soon. So that makes me very, very happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um,. There were two post credit scenes, one involving Sigourney Weaver's Dana Barrett, and the other one showing Ecto-1 going back to the old warehouse, the Ghostbusters building, with the red light blinking as if, like, the containment unit is about to break. And that's the end. You know, it's the po second post credit scene. So you damn well know the new one's going to take place in New York City. Again. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I love the movie. I thought it was great. So my rating for Ghostbuster Afterlife, MDK. Come on. 
was great. I loved it, and I can't wait to see another one. So, Ghostbusters Afterlife, not exactly a horror movie, but, it, you know, it's like a action comedy horror, if there is such a thing. I mean, Ghostbusters was never scary. Ghostbusters 2 was never scary. You know, Ghostbusters Afterlife wasn't really scary, but it has to do with ghosts. Right? So, yeah. I just did it. So, MDK. So, go ahead. Check it out. If you haven't already, it's a good time. So, now on to my second movie. Now, this one. Say hello to Mr. Skeleton. Uh, is a movie adapted from a Stephen King novel. This movie's called 1922. This movie is on Netflix right now. And it's about a family in the year 1922. And the main character's name is Wilf, played by Thomas Jane. And um, he's having problems with his wife. And she wants to sell the farm to move to Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, to start a dress shop. And he doesn't want to move. So, of course, what do you do? You're in a Stephen King book. You brainwash your son to think that we should kill your mother. So they kill her, throw her down a well. And to get the authorities off their track, they kill a cow and throw it on top of her mother who's getting devoured by rats and fill it in with dirt. So, uh, the movie goes on with there's rats all over the place. All over the place. And the son, overwhelmed with guilt from killing his mother, decides to leave and Bill go be with his girlfriend. And they end up, uh, she gets pregnant and they become this uh, duo, kind of like Bonnie and Clyde, called the Sweetheart Bandits. They're robbing stores for money and this and that. And while this is all going on, Wilf is back home by himself, totally depressed. The house is caving in. He's not keeping up to anything. The cow lives in the house with him. Very strange. Uh, he keeps seeing his dead wife's ghost around everywhere. And at a certain point, he gets bit by a rat, you know, and his hand gets infected. He doesn't do anything with it, and then when he goes, he gets his hand amputated. So he has no hand anymore because it's a rat. Um, and this whole thing's a shit show for this Wolf guy. Like, everything's going downhill. And then while they're robbing a store, uh, the son and their pregnant uh, girlfriend, she gets shot. And they go to this abandoned house. It's the middle of winter. She dies, you know, and then he blows his head off, you know, and then they have the funeral and you can see his face is all eaten by rats, you know, the son's face, you know, and all this is being told from the future of Will, who is writing his, I don't say autobiography, that's not right, but he's writing what happened. You know, and at the end, you know, he he hears breathing or, or whatever it is. And he turns around and he sees the lives that he's destroyed. His wife is there, the girlfriend and their son. You know, they're all the kind of been eaten by rats, you know, and they're ghosts. And the son's holding the knife, the knife that they killed his mother with and said, hold still, this won't hurt. You know, and, poof, you know, that's the end of the movie. You know. So, with 1922, it wasn't a fast-paced movie, but it was slowly building to something. And then when it came to the end, it, it paid off pretty decently. Um, I don't think it was scary. They had, like, maybe one or two little jumps, but it wasn't that type of movie. Um... So, 1922 for me, it was a MD. I definitely suggest seeing it. Um, Thomas Jane was great. Um, and you don't see that many Stephen King adaptations that are new anymore. So, it was good seeing that, you know. So, uh, today on this show, you had a 
MDK Ghostbusters Afterlife and MD1922 both go see them both. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife is everywhere. 1922 right now is on Netflix. Cheers. Yeah. What? I am so happy to be back amongst the horror den. All my horror stuff. It's just how I left it. So nice. I'm back. I'm back. Michael, I'm back. You can see Michael back there. He's kind of hanging out. Uh, who else is back? Did you hear the news? So they're making Scream 6, right? But Nev Campbell didn't want to do it because she wasn't getting paid enough. How do you not pay the star of the franchise? Come on now. It makes no sense to me. And Scream 6 is being like a total reboot of the series going to New York City. It's not even going to be in, in Woodsboro. So, I mean, maybe that's a good reason not to have Nev Campbell come back to Sydney Prescott. Because, because they killed off Dewey. So it's like, okay, you are going to have Gail Weathers be the main star. Yeah, they better axe her off too. Because I really hope, I wish she would have gotten the axe to the Dewey. And now with Sydney Prescott not coming back... You know, see, look at that. It, it all went dark. It's not a good sign. <laughs> but everybody, thank you again for hanging out with me on this edition of Doogie's Horror Den. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, comment, whether you've watched Ghostbusters or 1922. And then uh, let me know what you want to see. It's coming out soon. Nope is the big one for me. Um, until then, I will see you all next time. I am Doogie. Just watch a horror movie. What's it going to do? Scare you? <laughs>